You're listening to the Play Therapy Parenting Podcast with Dr. Brenna Hicks. Hi, I'm Dr. Brenna Hicks, the Kid Counselor. This is the Play Therapy Parenting Podcast, where I give you insight, awareness, and enlightenment about your parenting and your relationship with your kids. In today's episode, we are officially at 100. So this is our 100th episode. I'm so excited. I've been waiting a really long time for this. And I'm just grateful to celebrate with you because I wouldn't have 100 episodes without all of you. So thank you for being with me on this journey. 100 episodes is a huge milestone That's a ton of collective hours that we've spent together, and I'm just really grateful and excited to have this opportunity to do this with you. So in today's episode, we are going to cover a brief overview in main highlight form of the first 100 episodes, because obviously we've covered a ton and we've gone on this journey together. But for those of my listeners that maybe are newer or have not been with me for the whole time, I want just for us to have a recap, kind of recenter ourselves, reground ourselves on what this is all about and what we've learned and what we're doing together. Secondly, I want to share some exciting things, how we're growing and expanding and just some things that are in the works from my side and just kind of where I see some new avenues opening up. So really excited to share that with you. And then finally, just to kind of, I guess, encapsulate everything that we've done over 100 episodes, I want to share something that I read this week and and kind of tie that into why we do this, why we're on this journey together, all this time that we spend together, what is, what's the goal, what's the purpose, and I think that this quote that I read kind of sums it all up, so we'll dive into that together. The path to calm, confident, and in-control parenting starts now. All right, so for those of you who are my veterans that have been with me from the very beginning, we've done it together. Thank you for always being such a huge supporter and being such a big part of this podcast family. For those of you who are new, welcome. We're glad you're here. And to all of you, please continue to share this with your friends. Please continue to make your colleagues and your family members and your friends and your neighbors aware of this. We are kind of a a growing sea, and I'm so happy to see that there are constantly new listeners and there's more downloads and there's more subscriptions, but we we have to keep this going because the next generation of kids depend on us putting in the work. And so I'm grateful to be on this path with you. Thanks for trusting me with some of your time each week. So what have we covered in these last 100 episodes? Obviously, I can't dive deeply into that because it's a lot. But I wanted to hit four highlights that I think kind of encapsulate the the main points of where we've been and why we do this. So first, my vision is a world full of happy kids who become happy adults. That drives my mission at my center with my private clients, with the parents that I coach privately with the podcasts that I do, with the workshops and trainings and conferences that I do. It's all about happy kids who become happy adults. And the way that I know best to ensure that that happens is to have adults in kids' lives that are equipped and trained and confident and they know how to handle situations in a way that they have already developed a framework and a sense of what they want to accomplish in those moments. So that is the driving force behind this, a world full of happy kids who become happy adults. And I think one of the best ways to accomplish that is through play therapy principles. So all of these episodes, all of my teaching, all of everything that I share with you is rooted in a child-centered play therapy approach because it works, because it's amazing to see what happens when it's used effectively, and it transforms lives. It transforms parents, it transforms kids, it transforms families. I see it every day, and my center is a beacon of hope 
for a lot of kids and parents and families that were really hurting. And play therapy provides the foundation upon which healing takes place. So what you get from me is play therapy principles tied in with a whole bunch of other thoughts, but it's always rooted in play therapy. Third, kindness towards our kids is a huge driving principle. And I've had a lot of you reach out to me and share with me your thoughts and comments on that. And I've been so greatly appreciative to hear from you. And I've had a lot of you say, you know, I feel like I'm a good parent. I feel like I am an engaged parent. I feel like I am, you know, a pretty squared away parent, but I don't know that I've ever necessarily been a kind parent. And I'm aware of that now and I'm working on that now. And that's what this journey is all about, right? We don't know what we don't know, but once we're exposed to an idea, we can make meaningful changes. And I think being kind to our kids is at the heart of creating happy kids who become happy adults because it's easy to be unkind. That's the default mode. It's easy to get frustrated. It's easy to yell. It's easy to punish. It's easy to do a lot of things. But it takes a lot of intention and effort to be kind, even when we discipline, to be kind, even when we have to set limits, to be kind when our kids are bouncing off the walls going crazy. Kindness is at the root of why we do what we do. And finally, as always, ad nauseum, I'm on repeat, I know, but I can't say it enough. It all comes back to the relationship. Relationship is key to everything that we do. Con, re, relationship cannot take place. And that, let me, let me say that differently. The relationship overrides everything. And if there is no relationship, we can't accomplish the things that we want to. So connection before content all the time, we have to be aware that the relationship is at the center of everything and then everything else flows out of that. So if we spend no other energy or effort other than working on our relationship with our children, that is the most meaningful work that we can do. And you will always get ways to have a deeper, more connected, more effective relationship with your kids at the Play Therapy Parenting family. So there's a very brief overview of our last 100 episodes I think that if we can stick with those four guiding principles, I think we are all going to be really proud of the parents that we become and that we already have become. We're in the process of becoming. It's, a, it's an ever-evolving thing. So I'm very grateful that we've all been able to share on this 100-episode journey together. All right, so secondly, some growth and expansion and some exciting things that I want to make you aware of. So more and more, I have a growing audience. I am being consistently made aware of new listeners all over the world. I've had people reach out to me from all different countries and all different parts of the United States, and I've had the opportunity to have some chats and some phone calls, and I've been emailing and it's just been such an amazing thing to see how this is growing. And, you know, I don't think I've ever shared the story. So this is kind of a surprise that I never have brought this up. But this podcast began in 2006. I, I wasn't podcasting then, but the, the beginning of this podcast was a weekly newsletter to my clients that I saw in office. So every time a family brought their child for a play therapy session, I would give them a printed newsletter with a little tidbit or a little tip or a little skill. And it was truly meant just for my clients that I saw in office. And that was back in 06. And so to have evolved from that to blog articles and then to videos and then now to podcasts, I really did not see it unfolding the way that it has when I was typing up those email news or those uh, printed newsletters so long ago. But I'm so excited about the doors that have been opened and the way that this audience and this community is growing and expanding and 
you know, it's just, it's a huge blessing to me. I, I truly am excited about this time that I spend with you each week. And it's just been a really fun journey and I didn't really expect to be on it. So I just thought you should know that I had very humble beginnings when this began. And I'm really excited that it has grown the way that it has. And so speaking of growth and some other things that have been in the works, Back in June, I started a second podcast. I don't talk about it a whole lot because it's geared a little bit more toward therapists, but I started a second podcast called Play Therapy Podcast. It is a deep dive into child-centered non-directive play therapy, so geared more toward clinicians, therapists, counselors, Parents, however, teachers, however, I know I have a broad range of listeners. So if you would like to go really deep into child-centered play therapy principles, you may want to check it out. Again, it's growing. I have incredible feedback from that audience. So I started a second podcast in June called Play Therapy Podcast. That's been an amazing new direction. And in the next couple of months, I'm actually going to be launching a third podcast So this is kind of your little preview, and so more information to come about that. Stay tuned, but I'm going to be adding a third podcast family in the next few months here, so really looking forward to that and seeing how that takes off. One final area of growth and expansion and partnership, we have a local organization in the Tampa area. I'm in Florida. I don't know if everyone knows that, but um, in the Tampa Bay area of Florida, there is a local organization called Hope Children's Home. And I recently reconnected with them. I actually have known about them for many years. I've actually done some work projects there a long time ago, but I've reconnected with them and I just toured the facility this last week, met with the director and the marketing person, their husband and wife, and it is just absolutely an amazing organization. They take in children and they care for them and it 100% aligns with my vision, my mission, my passion, everything that I believe about kids and what they need and their their amazing capacity for growth. It's all represented at Hope Children's Home. So we are going to start partnering with them and there'll be opportunities for you all to partner from a distance as well. So stay tuned for that as well. That's going to be a really exciting piece of this podcast family. And we're going to be able to do some really cool things together. So Hope Children's Home in Tampa, that's going to be a really cool partnership. So more information to come on that as well. All right. So finally, this quote, you know how much I love quotes. That's one of my favorite things. My quote books are overflowing. And I read one a couple weeks ago. I flagged it. I didn't know exactly when I was going to work it into an episode, but I feel like the hundredth episode is the perfect time to do that because it kind of just reminds us of where we're going and and why we're doing this. So I'm I'm really going to try to honor my German and Austrian heritage here and not really butcher this name. But the quote is by Johann Wolfgang von Gatto. <laughs> that was my best attempt. Um, if I'm reading it the way I would normally say it, it's Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. But I know that that's a really bad butcher job of the German. So he wrote, treat people as if they were what they ought to be and you help them to become what they are capable of being. Let me read that one more time so it can sink in. Treat people as if they were what they ought to be, and you help them to become what they are capable of being. So, so often we struggle with our children's behavior. We struggle with their attitudes, their actions, their decisions, You know, it seems to make no sense, the things that they say and do, and it doesn't because they don't think through anything. (laughs) So it makes no sense. That's very true. And it's easy to treat them based on their behavior when it's negative. It's easy to treat them based on their attitude. It's easy to treat them based on the fact that they get in trouble every single day. It's easy to label them and to brand them and to cast them off in our minds as the troublemaker, 
the brat, the manipulative one, the negotiator, the whatever label we want to put on the child because of past history and actions and attitudes and all of those things. But if we think about our four guiding principles that we just covered, right? So we want a world full of happy kids who become happy adults. We use play therapy principles to help get us there. We are always working toward being kind toward our kids. And the relationship is everything. If we funnel those into this quote, treat people as if they were what they ought to be, and you help them to become what they're capable of being. This is all about self-fulfilling prophecy. We've talked about that in several episodes before. If you're new Go to the website and you can find the archived episodes. Self-fulfilling prophecy says when we expect people to be a certain way, they will become that. So treat people as if they were what they ought to be. We have an opportunity to treat our kids as if they are respectful, treat them as if they are obedient, treat them as if they were kind, treat them as if they were helpful treat them as if they were thoughtful, treat them as if they were capable. We have hundreds, thousands of opportunities to treat them as if they were those things. And you help them to become what they're capable of being. They are capable of all of it. They might be stuck in a maladaptive state. They might be stuck in a dysregulated state, but they're capable of all of those things. And if we treat them as if they ought to be that way, in other words, the expectation is, I know that you can be that right now. It helps them to become what they're capable of being. And this is why we talk about the four pillars. This is why we talk about using encouragement. You can figure it out. You can do it. You you know how to handle that. You can figure it, you can solve it, you can do it. The principles always circle back to, I have faith in the best version of who you can be. And I'm here to help you get there. I was a substitute teacher back in, oh my gosh, 2004, 2005, when I was in my master's program. And I walked into elementary schools, middle schools, high schools. It's actually the, one of the huge reasons that I became a child therapist. And I've shared that a little bit, but I'll save that for another time. That's a longer story. But I walked into Belcher Elementary School, which such a cool side note. I actually went to Belcher Elementary School from five till 11 and then came back to substitute teach at the same elementary school that I actually attended. And some of the same teachers were there and I ended up substitute teaching with my former teachers. That was such an amazing experience. And I'm so grateful that I was able to do that. But I was at Belcher elementary school and I took my class to music. So we were leaving the music building and another class was walking in. I don't know the teacher's name. I don't remember anything about that day, other than what she said to her class. I'm walking out of music. She's walking in. So her class had to wait in a line. This is kindergartners, by the way. That's helpful information. So these are five-year-olds. They had to wait in a quiet single file line for all of my class to come out of the building before they could enter in. And so she had asked them to stand quietly in a line and wait. And they were poking each other and laughing and giggling and falling out of line and and shoving each other and whatever. And so she calmly looked at all of them and said, friends, we can do so much better than that. I'm going to give you an opportunity to try that again. And she marched them back into the classroom, turned around, walked back out and asked them to line up and wait for us to leave the room. And they were transformed kids. They were quiet. They were calm. They were standing still. They were waiting patiently. They weren't making a peep. And they weren't moving a muscle. And I was, gosh, I was in my master's program. So I was 23 at the time, 24. 
I have never forgotten that. I don't even know the teacher. I feel so bad I would give her credit. Shout out to whoever you were. I, I don't even know anything about her. I just know she went, friends, we can do so much better than that. Let's try again. And she gave them another opportunity. And what, what was she communicating? I'm going to treat you as if you are what you ought to be so that I can help you become what you're capable of being. And I watched it in real time in front of my face. I watched it manifest itself and I watched it come true. Self-fulfilling prophecy. I believe in you. I believe in the greatness that you possess. I believe in the capacity that you have to be the best version of yourself that you can be. And it helps them to do it. So I hope that encourages you. Don't get bogged down by the muck and the junk and the yuck of your kids' behavior. Treat them as if they were already what they ought to be because it helps them become that way. Use encouragement, use esteem-building responses, and continue to communicate to them that you believe in them, that they have the capacity to do it, and you're just going to encourage them to get there. So thank you so very much for being a part of this for 100 episodes. Oh my gosh, I, it's even crazy for me to say it out loud. We are all on a journey. That means our kids are too, right? Because what we learn and what we implement and what we change, it trickles down to our kids. So please continue to work hard we are in this together. We're on this journey. I'm really grateful to have you along for the ride. And I can't wait for 100 more episodes. If you have thoughts, comments, questions, suggestions, if you would like me to cover a topic, if you have a question and you want to pick my brain, please reach out to me, Brenna at thekidcounselor.com. I would love to feature your question or your comment or whatever on a future episode. So please reach out. I love to hear from you all. Thank you. Happy 100th episode. Can't wait to have 100 more. We'll talk again soon. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Play Therapy Parenting Podcast with Dr. Brenna Hicks. For more episodes and to subscribe to our newsletter, please go to www.playtherapyparenting.com.